Hello guys, this is David from MySide Proto Team and welcome to the MySide Academy. At the end of last year, we released the 5G IoT camera and so many customers are interested about it. But now, how do we configure the IoT function? So today, I will introduce the device and show you the configuration operations. This is a MySide 5G IoT camera equipped with 5G and LoRa modules. And this is a MySide IoT sensor which detected CO2, air pressure, temperature, and humidity. To use IoT sensor, we need the software to configure it. Here, I have installed the Android version on my phone. Apple users can search it on App Store, and Windows version could be downloaded from my outside IoT website. The sensor could communicate with my phone via NFC. And if you need to connect to the computer, a Type-C USB cable is needed. And one thing I need to mention is that both the sensor and the camera should work in the same frequency range. This CO2 sensor's module is EM500, CO2, and 950M. 950M means 950 MHz. This camera is 950M module 2. So that's all the preparation. Next, we will show you the IoT solution. First, the sensors and the camera connect to each other through LoRa 1 activation protocol. After that, the sensors report the data to the camera by LoRa RF at regular intervals. So in this solution, the camera plays the role of gateway, network server, and application server in the LoRa topology. Also, the camera can translate the data to the cloud or other backend software. So we will skip some of the common settings for cameras such as activation, network configuration, etc. For IoT section, it's divided into two parts, settings and alarm settings. The first page is for radios. Uh, let me enable the IoT first. Here shows the channel plan which could be changed between US950, AU950, AS923 and KR920. We need to match the channel plan with the sensor's configuration. And leaving the channel mask blank means using the default mask. Next is the channel related settings. Center frequency for radio zero for both transmitting and receiving. And radio one is only for receiving. Next one is the multi-channel settings. You can enable and disable them, choose the radio 1 or 0 as the central frequency, and set each one's frequency. And also you can configure uh, LoRa channel settings and FSK channel settings. So that's all about the radio part. Uh, generally speaking, it will work under the default radio parameters. The only thing that you need it to be noted uh, is matching the channel plan between the camera and the sensors. And here comes the profile settings. We have to save some profile first. Set the names, for example, class A, OTAA, and join type, class type, and more advanced settings like Mac version, Regional parameters revision, RX1 data rate offset, RX2 data rate ranging from SF12 to SF7, RX2 channel frequency and frequency list. All those settings are filled in with a default value. And for the following uh, test, I will add another profile, class A, ABP. So, uh, let's move on. The next part will be devices management. First, we need to name this device. Here we use the model of this uh, sensor, which is EM500 and CO2. And next is device EUI. You can check it from two box or devices tag. 
Device EUI is a device sensitive identifier that guarantees the uniqueness worldwide. And let's copy it here. These are two profiles I just uh, added, which have different joint type, OTAA and ABP, which means activation by personalization over the air activation. Those two joint types need different information to fill in while adding devices. For OTAA joint type, application key is needed. We have filled in the uh, default key of MyOSI sensors and you can also customize your own key on sensor side here. For ABP join type, there is no join request, so we have to fill in more data. After changing the sensor's join type to ABP, more information will be shown as follows. You can also customize them. You have to fill in the corresponding information into camera's configuration, device address, network session key and application session key so let's choose OTA here next set the OSD configuration of the sensors and click save button the device list shows the basic information of the sensor you added after adding the device to the list, we need to power, uh, power on or reboot the sensor to activation. Activation request is sent to the camera only when the sensor are powering on. So let's wait for two devices to com communicate. So once the sensor is activated, the list will update the relevant status uh, like battery lossing and activation and then you can click sensor button uh, to configure specific LoRa data. The sensor ID will show the serial number accordingly and you need to set each ID sensor type. In the future version, we can automatically identify sensor's type to better match the type, uh, sign, decimal point and unit, you'd better uh, show each ID's OSD first. Third one and the last one. You can see them on the video stream here now. By checking the sensor's data from your phone or toolbox, you can tell that the first uh, is temperature, but it's 10 times larger than uh, the real data, and the second one is humidity, and the third one is CO2, and the last one is air pressure. Now we are gonna set the correct uh, configuration here. For the first one, temperature sensor, uh, because uh, the OSD data is 10 times larger than the real data, so we set the decimal point forward as 1. next one is humidity and we can set the unit as others and uh, customize it and the third one is CO2 you can also customize the sensor type as CO2 and the unit ppm and the last one is pressure sensor and the point decimal point has one unit choose other and set H par so now let's check the line view clearly here temperature humidity CO2 and air pressure. Next, we move on to the alarm and threshold configuration. Here, 
we enable the first of the four rules. We take the temperature as an example. Set a high threshold, like 25 degree, and set the schedules as you need it, and the alarm action, which should be triggered. Here we take the OSD blink as as an example, and you can you can also set the OSD blink time. For better demonstrating our backend compatibility, I set the HTTP notification as well. For more details about how to set uh, HTTP notification, please check our troubleshootings or users menu. And don't forget to click save here. So that's all about configuration guide. After setting all configuration, I will demonstrate the actual solution customers may use. First is the alarm action we just set. Once the temperature from the sensor is higher than uh, 25 degrees, the OSD will blink. And for backend software, we can receive HTTP no event notification uh, from camera. Here we use uh, the VMS Enterprise as an example. Trigger alarm and push notification to VMS Enterprise. And recently we have implanted a connection to Myosite IoT Cloud, which form a more mature and comprehensive IoT solution. Here, the IoT camera will be added to cloud as a gateway to receive sensor data along with other LoRa gates. Uh, you can check the sensor state more intuitively from dashboard. More information about IoT cloud, please visit our IoT website as well. Today, we have introduced the IoT and given a demonstration of the solution. For more details, please refer to our IoT troubleshooting or contact our technical support. We believe IoT will be the breakthrough point and new direction for surveillance industry. And at the same time, we will keep optimizing our IoT products. Thank you.